Hey guys, I am Lana. This is from Corporate to Crystals and we're back for an energy update of sorts about what's upcoming. There's two things I want to talk about in this video. The first being um, like kind of a collective theme that I'm noticing that if you guys are experiencing, I wanted to give you some support or some validation for it. And then the second half of this video, I want to talk about the upcoming astrology because the upcoming astrology, we have a transit that has not happened in 2,800 years. It is very, very rare and it is going to shake everything up. And I'm going to get into that later, uh, but let's start with the collective like theme that I'm noticing right now. So depending where you are on your twin flame journey or your soul connection journey in general, um, what I am noticing is that people are at different stages, right? So if you're in separation, you're recently awakened to a connection, you're initiated into love. Um, awesome. This message probably will not resonate for you as much, but it's a good foresight as to what could happen in the future. So it's worth you knowing. For those of you who are at a place with your soul connection, twin or whatever other soul connection, and you're at this place of feeling like there's tension, it isn't working, and so you're feeling this need to separate or pull away to kind of like get your own energy right, and they need to do the same. That is a collective theme right now. Um, if you are feeling this need, like you're coming out of separation and you haven't spoken to your twin in a long time, but you're feeling this like desire and need to do so, that's a potential right now as well. Or for some of us who have multiple connections, you may have met a connection and you're feeling a combination of energies from that right now as well. Do I need to pull away from this person or do I need to stick it out, right? So I wanted to give some guidance on this. Um, no matter what situation you are in, the reason why they say self-love is so important on this journey is first of all it is, but second of all, it's the way you navigate for yourself and it also is the way that you show others how you want to be treated. So for situations where you're feeling like you need to pull away, it likely is because there's an imbalance in the connection and you needing to pull away is because the imbalance in the connection you need to get yourself back in balance in order to show up for any connection in a more stable way. Pardon me. So um, that energy, that imbalance in the connection, everyone's going to be feeling that a lot more right now if you, if there is an imbalance in the connection. Um, so that's the first thing is don't beat yourself up over it. This is collective. When you're out of balance, some of your old um, patterns or habits might pop back up. Be gentle with yourself. It's normal. It's supposed to pop up so you can see it. Once you can see it, you have awareness of it, and then you need to change your behavior, and that's how you integrate back into your um, experience. So by seeing something, you still have to then change your behavior to integrate it. Um, and that's what you need to do in order to move forward. So if you're in one of those places, I know it's it can be really heartbreaking to have to pull away from people you love um, for whatever reason. But just know that this is the test of loving yourself first and foremost at all times. Because even if you're just loving yourself to pull away to get yourself back in the best position that you can be or the best energy you can be, that is the right thing for the other person too. Because if you're not showing up in a hundred with your connection, then it's going to impact them as well and it can throw off their energy as well. So the imbalance you feed off of each other energetically um, and it'll just make things worse if you don't honor what you're being guided to do by kind of pulling away if that's what you're being guided to do. Um, and then for some of the people who are just truly needing to let go of their twin, what I would say is, and I've said this in other videos, but by choosing to love yourself and put that boundary in place and saying, I'm done, I'm walking away, I'm leaving it to the universe, whatever is meant to be will be, that actually energetically by you doing that and truly doing that, you cannot trick the universe, by truly stepping into your power and loving yourself enough to risk it all, 
leap of faith out into the unknown because you know you deserve better than wherever the heck you're at right now, that takes so much courage and that takes so much strength. And what that will do is energetically, whoever your divine counterpart is or the divine connection that is meant for you, you're one step closer to them by doing that. Even if it's with the person that you perceive to be your twin, energetically then it will call your twin to do the same. By loving yourself, it forces them to have to love themselves. And for, I'm going to just go off of the traditional patterns, the feminine, by choosing to love herself enough and walk away, then it forces the masculine to have to energetically connect to his own feminine for answers, his own feminine for um, light, his own feminine for everything because he will be stuck in his head and he's not going to understand what's going on and da, da, da. So energetically, you actually will, by you choosing to love yourself, you're allowing your twin to have to love themselves as well. So it is truly like you're leading the connection in that way. Even if the connection you're leading by walking away, you're not going to end up with, or you're choosing to walk away like done, done for good. That's totally okay, but you're actually doing a service to the other person by putting the boundary and loving yourself because it's actually mirroring to them how to do it themselves and also like encouraging them to dig within for their own answers rather than having an external source that they're seeking validation or answers from um, or even just light and energy, right? So you are doing the right thing for both parties, even when it doesn't feel like it, um, by creating a boundary, loving yourself harder, and doing the things that your intuition is guiding you to do. Whether that's walk away from the past you, walk away from a past connection, walk away from a current connection because it's just not fitting right right now. Whatever it is, choose yourself, love yourself, and just trust that on a, you know, with any soul connection on any spiritual path, you're being guided. And anytime you are not listening to your intuition or your own energy, you're not in alignment. So you need to follow it and trust that it's taking you somewhere and trust that it's not personal. Sometimes the greatest thing that we can do for someone else is to set a boundary so that they have to they're being forced at that point to look at their own stuff. That is, you know, their own darkness, right? We've talked about this before where in order for you to, to truly step into your light, you have to first sit in and deal with your darkness, transmute the dark into the light. Without seeing your darkness, you have no clue what you're supposed to like work on to make better, right? So the awareness of your darkness, your shadow, and then moving it towards the light is the process. And sometimes, unfortunately, in these connections, um, we have to be the person who sets really clear boundaries, not only for ourselves, but also our clear boundaries for ourselves, teach other people how to create them for themselves. And then it forces them to have to see their darkness, their shadow, and actually acknowledge it, sit with it, and have the strength because you know, they're going to need it to step into their own light. So if that's where you're at, I'm not saying that's easy. I'm not saying that it's comfortable. I'm not saying it's convenient. And I'm not saying that it is fun. But what I am saying is on this path, uh, in just, I would say sacred unions in general of whatever variation, um, Sacred unions require people to be in their light and with really strong boundaries and consciously navigating relationships. And being on this path means you are one of the people who are essentially leaders of being initiated by love. So on the planet going forward, we're going to have a lot of people stepping into soul connections. We're basically, um, right now, we're creating the framework and the template for conscious relationships down the road, soul connection relationships down the road. What does conscious love look like? And we are the leaders of helping new earth navigate what a loving relationship actually looks like. Because if we look at it now, we can all see it's broken, right? 
People are choosing relationships out of convenience. They are choosing relationships for material reasons. They're choosing relationships to hide from their shadow. That is why this path exists. That is why it is so important. And that is why a bunch of people are about to meet soul connections so that they can go through the same process. We are truly navigating the journey right now to make it easier for other people. We are creating the template and we are figuring it out and we are um, basically transmuting the energy and the clogged like blockages and the fact that our consciousness, our collective consciousness, all of us together, the fact that none of us have like navigated relationships consciously before, we are doing it. Twin flames and sacred unions, conscious relationships in general, we are the people who are actually creating the template, transmuting the energy and integrating it into the 3D. That's how important this is. So when you are lacking confidence or feeling guilty about creating boundaries with your connection, don't, do not feel guilty. You're doing it for the entire collective. You're doing it for every single relationship that is built off of settling because those people deserve better and we're going to be the ones showing people what better looks like, feels like, and how to get there, right? It's a huge responsibility. And I wouldn't say it's like easy at all. And the only thing I can say is it's gonna get easier the more of us on this planet that go through um, soul connection, like conscious relationships. It will get easier, but we are at the, we're like front line it's not easy right now. So that's the first thing is that is a theme that's going on. That's kind of the big picture as to like, why does this matter? Like, I want you to be in love. I want you to have the partner you dream of. And I want you to have the family you dream of if that's like what you're looking for, right? Whatever your heart's desires are, they want you to, they desire you to. I know for me, I want all of that, you know, but it's just, I have to trust and I have to flow and I have to let everything happen the way that the universe God is intending for it to happen. And right now, the most important thing is all of us who are initiated by love into soul connections of whatever variety, specifically Twin Flame Journey, if you are on this channel, a large quantity of you are on Twin Flame Journeys, but we are leading the charge on this. We are creating the framework we have it templated in us, we know how to do it, and that's why this is so important, because you're not just creating that boundary for yourself and for your counterpart, you're doing it for the collective, because that boundary is what guides the masculines to their heart, and their heart is their soul, it is the feminine of their themselves. They need to reconnect with their own heart and their own feminine energy to know what that feels like, what they need to work on, what they love, what they don't, all of it, what they're settling on, what they're inconsistent with, etc. So it's important. And I would tell you, have the confidence that anyone who is not showing up to you consistently from their heart, from their feminine energy, speaking their truth, matching your energy, matching your vulnerability, it's not easy and it's not going to be easy. But if they're not trying, then you deserve better. If they're not putting in the effort, you deserve better. I don't care what kind of connection it is. And I'm sorry, I walked away from my twin, so it's easy for me to like say that. But at the same time, you will be brought another divine love. You will. And it will be beautiful. And your path is by design. You just have to trust in it. So you're not failing, you're doing everything the way that you need to, but if you are being guided to set a boundary and to love yourself, and if you're miserable, you need to step out of that, have the courage to step out of that and choose joy. Choose to move forward, choose to know that you deserve whatever good is coming, but you have to have the courage to do it. So please do it, you are a leader. You really, really are. It doesn't freaking feel like it sometimes because I know how hard this journey is, but we are true love warriors initiated by love to create conscious relationships on this planet. It is the new template. Soul connections are going to become far more common. And we're just the front line working through the kinks, 
You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, a, that's the biggest part. The second part about the astrology. Guys, we have a huge astrology or astrological transit in like less than a week. So in two days, we've got a new moon in Leo. So a lot of things I was just talking about, confidence, passion, um, like heart-led action, right? Like Leo, the lion, they're courageous, they're passionate, they are um, fun, adventure, like very uplifting energy. So whatever the new moon in two days is pulling up for you, it's likely putting a spotlight on an area of your life that you need to step into, have the courage, the passion is there, you're wanting it, the desire is there, it's fun, but it's scary potentially. Like you need courage to step into that leadership role or you need courage to like take that step or to let go of that old behavior pattern that you have been stuck in for a really long time, right? All of that takes courage, all of it. So wherever it is showing up for you, that's what the new moon is probably gonna be addressing. It's gonna put a spotlight on where you need to step into more courage, passion, fun, excitement, love, um, leadership, etc. I know that's happening for me. So, and then in, in addition to that, the big transit, the one that happens or happened like 2,800 years ago, that is on the 31st or first, depending where you are in the world, but it is the Uranus Mars North node conjunction. If you're not into astrology, just bear with me for a second. Um, and I'll get it dumbed down, but basically Uranus is the planet of it's the awakener. So it's a planet of um, rebellion, unpredictability, change, sudden change, um, awakening, electricity. Um, all of that is Uranus related. Pair that with, in the con conjunction, it's meeting with Mars, the planet of war, the planet of raw energy, of action, desire, forward movement, right? Like, Mars is masculine energy that wants to do. It wants to create, it wants to do something. So to have that energy paired with unpredictable awakening energy on the North Node, the North Lunar Node, which is the node of our destiny path as a collective, something fated and destined is about to happen for our entire world, our collective, um, and all of us as individuals as well. So I'm not sure how it's going to play out. It could be, you know, I'm hoping for the best, but those are some really big energies. And because it's all three of them are meeting in Taurus, Taurus is, I've talked about this before, but Taurus is about money, food, um, self-worth, things we value. It's Venusian. So any Venus related um, aspects, uh, anything Taurus related could be impacted. So we're already seeing food, we're already seeing money, right? We've got Uranus, which is electricity. We're seeing things with power grids. I want you guys to pay attention, and this is not to bring up fear, this is to bring up preparation. This is to bring up, trigger some thoughts in your head about how can I be proactive if this, that, and the other happens? How, what can I do to prepare my family, not in fear, but in preparation, to ensure we feel safe and stable? Uh, stability is huge with Taurus. So everything is going to be people kind of looking at what do I value? What do I care about? And how can I bring more st stability into my life and making changes around that? And at the same time, these two big planetary energies meeting the North Node, they're going to be bringing energy to give us the rebellious um, fire to make those changes. And some of them will be like, this is it, I'm, I'm taking the leap, self-induced, and some of them will not be. And I know Uranus energy quite well at this point because it literally uprooted my entire life with a Uranus return that I had. If you resist Uranus, it will get bigger. So Uranus wants to essentially come in and get you on to, into the right direction of your path. And Uranus doesn't really care how inconvenient it might feel for you. So it will awaken you to a bunch of areas that you have been holding yourself back in. It will awaken you potentially spiritually. It could 
we could have a mass spiritual awakening. Um, we could have all sorts of stuff happen right now. So I want you guys to be prepared. I want you guys to understand if something big happens, the energies are kind of calling for it. Have faith and trust in the fact that whatever's coming is taking us in a direction towards where we're supposed to go. It's a faded um, event or faded events to get us all in the right direction for our own personal journeys and for our greater journey together. Um, but yeah, these transit, this transit is one of the biggest ones of the year. So over the next however many weeks, it's going to get a little rocky. Um, and I just want to make sure you guys kind of like know why, or, you know, God forbid there's like power outages or something. I just wanted prior to anything happening. I want you guys to like, know. I know for me, um, astrology or just like energy reads for myself, it really helps empower me to feel a part of something rather than to get kind of stuck in my own like victim mentality of like, why is this happening to me? It's like, oh, we're all going through big changes. We're all going through unexpected, big, sudden changes, potentially that for good or worse, however you perceive the changes to be, they there's a lesson in it that you will look back on and understand. But in the meantime, it will not be comfortable because human beings don't like change. To know that that could be why a big shift in my life is about to happen, that feels better to me than to know that, you know, I'm just over here getting beat up by the universe or whatever. Because sometimes it feels like that, I know. Um, so yeah, that is what's upcoming. I hope that doesn't bring up fear in you guys. I want you to be leaders. I want you to feel prepared. I want you to feel um, empowered. I want you to take the information and start like making steps, conscious steps in the right direction for small changes you're being guided to, to make because the time is now. Um, so yeah. Those are the two thoughts that I had combined into one video for two very different reasons. I hope they help, but they also intertwine, right? So like if you have unpredictable changes happening in your connections right now, trust it. Don't get back into controlling it. Like let everything just flow the way it's supposed to. There's reasons why everything is happening right now, specifically with the masculine collective, not just twin flames, but just the, the masculine collective on our planet. Um, the masculine energy on our planet right now is going through a transformation. Um, the masculine energy on the planet is so used to being in its head that right now in a situation where everything feels unstable and unpredictable, this is not the right place to feel comfortable with all that instability and unpredictability. All you're going to do is keep spinning your wheels and get stuck overthinking. So the masculines are all being forced, the energy, uh, masculine energy is being forced to find a different solution. Get out of their head, energy, uh, get out of its head and get into its heart, feminine, soul, right? To help everyone balance their energies out. That is what a big shift is supposed to to be guiding us all for towards rather. Um, and that's why it's probably a lot easier for core feminine essence people right now, because we're used to tapping into feminine energy, but for masculines who have never needed to, because we've been in a very heavy masculine dominant society and some wounded masculine, they're now having to evolve into evolved masculine, divine masculine energy, and also learn how to connect with their feminine or learn how to connect with heart, soul, love, and um, connection in general. It is a big deal and it's not easy. Um, we all have been there balancing our own energies out is, you know, it takes a lot of work. So if the people in your life, um, if you're watching this happen, you can see it, there's ripples and it's themes, you can see it a lot of the core masculine energies in your life are needing compassion right now, right? 
maybe they're pulling away. Maybe they're getting really angry. Maybe, you know, whatever things are coming up. And so have compassion, have the understanding, know what's going on and just know that whatever comes, um, use your intuition to guide you through it. You are strong enough. Trust yourself. Um, everything's going exactly as it is supposed to, but it could look unpredictable and a little wild. Um, so just keep holding faith and trusting through that no matter what happens. So that's what I got. I hope this is helpful. After a few people had kind of like asked me to talk about the collective um, energy themes, I was like, I just need to do this into a video because enough of you were asking what's going on. So um, I'm sorry if this is a little bit late. I didn't pick up on the fact that it was more collective than I thought. And it's tying into the astrology now. So it, it made sense to me. So the time is now. So I'm sending you all my love. I hope you guys are doing great. Um, email me, message me on Instagram, comment here, tell me what's going on for you. Um, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Um, sending you all of my love. And I'm hoping that this new moon in Leo have the courage to step into this new chapter, this new you, this new whatever, because it is going to help with wherever we are all headed. You stepping into that space will not only help you, but it will also help everybody because it is a faded, destined um, part of your path. Okay, cool. Well, I will see you guys on the next one and I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye.